Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss some learning challenges in deep learning, or more specifically, training challenges. So uh, by the end of this module, you should be able to uh, define vanishing gradient. And here is a, a review of backpropagation. So if you recall, one of the key ideas with backpropagation is as opposed to simply viewing the entire neural network as one large function composed of a series of activation functions, we compute the gradient iteratively by going from the output levels of the network um, backwards, uh, where the gradient at each um, lower level is dependent on the results from the upper level. And that's where we have this thing called the output sensitivity that is computed derived from that. And you see the output sensitivity uh, for layer J is dependent on the output sensitivity for the previous layer, layer K in this case. Now, the thing to see in here is that we are multiplying, uh, we have a product of the output sensitivity from the previous layer. And so as the, uh, as the output sensitivity, if it's very small, and then say your previous weights are also very small, then what's going to happen is the output sensitivity at layer J will be even smaller still. And as you go downward and downward, it's going to uh, at some point be a number that is so small the computer will automatically set it to zero. And this is what's called the vanishing gradient. And we'll talk about it right here. So we have this product that happens over and over again of potentially a very small number and it can go to zero. And when you think of very deep networks, so like we saw with AlexNet or with a very uh, big recurrent neural network, uh, it can happen quite easily. Now, we mentioned before, this is one of the things that led to the popularity of the ReLU activation function, because any positive value will have a derivative of 1. And here it is. Now, of course, the downside of it is you, as soon as your input is 0, because practically, um, even though the gradient's undefined at 0, once it hits there, it'll be set to 0, uh, your derivative goes to 0 as well and zeros multiplied through give you more zeros. So to give a little bit of something so it doesn't go quite to zero, there were a couple uh, follow-ons to the ReLU, such as the leaky ReLU, which we see here instead gives us a, uh, a very small slope um, for the line when we have a, uh, a negative value or a zero value as input. And then we have the GALU, which is a probabilistic interpretation, but again, if we look at it, we're not uh, being treated only as, as zero. We get an actual number. So let's look, uh, let's return to the backpropagation process. And again, there's our output sensitivity. And now let's look at another issue. Backpropagation also contains a sum of the weights uh, and uh, multiplied by the output sensitivity from uh, the upper layer as well. Now, what if this becomes very large and we could run into an issue of an exploding gradient, potentially? And so uh, this calculation could become very large at the other extreme, and this would correspond with a cliff encountered by gradient descent, which we'd want to avoid. And so how do you, uh, well, and also this comes up in RNNs because, uh, again, you could have very large networks. So how do you avoid this? Well, an easy way is gradient clipping, and here's the key idea. The important thing about the gradient is actually more about the direction as opposed to the magnitude. So as long as gradient descent to algorithm is being pushed in the correct direction, uh, the magnitude is less important. And so if we just limit the minimum and maximum values of the gradient, we could retain the direction, but have curtailed the magnitude and avoided this exploding gradient issue. 
So that concludes our lecture on uh, training issues for deep learning. Uh, stay tuned for more content.